Good morning. morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. I really want to take my mask off, but I won't you because can. we're sharing a microphone. It's okay. Yeah, go ahead. What? I'm looking go at ahead. you. Wait. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. I can smile at all of you in public today. So. No, welcome to worship. We have a beautiful morning, and uh, if you are in your vehicles and searching, it's 88.7. Seven. We've got the um, audio transmitter on now, so 88.7. And if you um, if you can hear me in the very back, will you just wave at me so I know you can hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> I just wanted to check on that. Just a couple quick announcements um, before we begin worship this morning. Um, welcome, Facebook viewers. We're uh, happy to have you with us online. We're back to the, um, well, our executive producer there, Steve Reedstrom, is uh, <laughs> using Trisha's phone again. And so that's how we're doing Facebook Live today. And uh, we want to just let you know we will be celebrating communion. So if you'd like to take a moment just to prepare for that, to get, gather your elements, that would be great. Um, also, uh, this week, the church office will be closed on Tuesday, just one day, but um, just to let you all know that, so if you need something, call ahead or, or leave a message or whatever, but the office itself will be closed on Tuesday. Um, and then an invitation to read the newsletter that just went out this past week. There are lots of um, opportunities for volunteering that are beginning in June, and uh, so, yeah, take some time to read through that and maybe highlight the things you're interested in, in doing. So uh, I think that's all the announcements at this time, and I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able or as you want uh, for the confession and forgiveness. We live in a world in which the things that have come to be are not yet what they ought to be. Let us pause to affirm what is broken in our world and to confirm our need for God's grace and peace in this world. Most merciful God, even in the midst of celebration, we recognize the ways we cause or suffer brokenness. In your grace, forgive us and heal our heart hurts. Bring forth from us a harvest of compassion and the fruits of gentleness and peacemaking. 
the gifts of wisdom and justice. Make us new this day. Amen. By God's grace, we receive mercy in our times of need. The good news is that our sins are forgiven and our wounds are healed. May we continue to pray for one another, care for those who suffer, and seek common ground for a common good, so all may have life in its fullness. Amen. And we continue with song. You can be seated. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 23, and I invite you to read responsibly with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy, and mercy shall, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 John. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to stand again as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I understand that the scripture readings, uh, the men's morning Bible study did two weeks in a row, Kim? Pardon? Yeah, so you can come on up here. <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. We are almost at that point where we're not gonna keep mixing up our lectionary readings any longer. Um, we, uh, last week we, you guys, you wouldn't pay any attention to this, but we've been doing Easter, then we did Easter 2, then East, no, then we did Easter 3, then 2, then 5, then 4. Next week we're actually going to do 6, but we've been doing it to try to often stay in touch with what the Sunday school children have been learning. So today is, uh, we are celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday. Oh, there are some kids back there. You want to come? Yeah, I just have a book to read. I was going to see if you wanted to come on up and see my pictures better, but that's okay. This is a book called Sherman the Sheep, and uh, it's about sheep not always excited about wanting something better, right? And for better or worse, I think you'll hear me talk today about how we probably have a lot in common with sheep. And so these sheep want a better place to live. And so one day, Sherman the Sheep is napping beneath his favorite apple tree, and his cousin Wayne trots up and says, wake up. Sherman opens an eye. What is it, Wayne? Sherman, said Wayne, the flock is not happy with this field anymore. We want to live in the best field in the valley, and we want you to lead us there. Sherman sighed. Oh, why me? Everybody knows you're the smartest sheep in the field, said Wayne, maybe even in the whole valley. Uh, I don't know about that, said Sherman, but I do know where the best field in the whole valley is. Well, let's go. It's a long, hard journey, said Sherman, but if that's what you want, follow me. So they started out, right? Along they're going. They left Happy Valley Sheep Ranch. After a while, Wayne says, are we almost there? We're hungry. Perhaps the sign will tell us where we can find food, said Sherman. Oh, I didn't know you could read signs, said Wayne. Oh, sign reading is a bit of an art. He tilted his head and closed an eye, and the whole flock was quiet while Sherman studied the sign. He said, I believe this sign says free food for sheep. You can't see it, but it really says Happy Valley City Dump. 
So the flock goes to the dump and they're like, hmm, this grass tastes like spinach. Never mind, said Sherman. The grass is always sweet in the best field in the valley. So on they go. Sherman sings a song, flock sings along. Pretty soon they start to get wet. <gasps> we don't like to get wet, Sherman. Are we almost there? No problem, said Sherman. I think this sign says shelter for sheep. Can you see the railroad crossing sign from there? Look, said Sherman, it's a barn with wheels. And he led them into that strange barn with wheels. Suddenly the barn began to move, slowly and fast, then faster and faster. This barn makes me dizzy, wailed Wayne. Don't worry, said Sherman. The barn never moves at the best valley in, at the, in the best field in the valley. Finally the rain stopped and the barn stopped and they all got out, kept singing their song. The sun came out, soon it was very hot. Oh, now of course they're thirsty, right? Are we almost there, Sherman? Sherman said, no problem. It looks ahead and the sign says, hey sheep, water ahead. And it really says, stop ahead, ferry crossing. But Sherman leads them right onto the drinking platform. And away they go. Ugh, this water tastes like mud, said Sherman. No problem, the water will always taste good at the best field in the valley. Off they go, singing their song. They march down long, dusty roads, scrambled up steep winding paths, and pranced upon high, shaky bridges. Finally, they get to the top of the hill, and Sherman says, we're here. The flock crowds around and looks down at the best field in the whole valley. Ooh, ah, I do believe this sign says sheep are happy here. So as Sherman leads the flock into the field, he sings a song and the flock sings along to Happy Valley Sheep Ranch. Sherman, this field looks familiar, said Wayne. Isn't this our same field? Of course, said Sherman. Our field has always been the best field in the valley. I wouldn't live anywhere else. You really are the smartest sheep in the valley, said Wayne, maybe even in the whole world. Bah, said Sherman modestly. Then he yawned and settled down beneath his favorite apple tree for a nap. I like that book because it reminds us of uh, what it means, maybe, sometimes, well, how we might be sh like sheep or sheep might be like us, but that reminder as well, don't most of us always want something better? And uh, we realize often that what we have is a blessing in and of itself. And everything that we have, of course, God has given us, and so we give God thanks and praise for that because we're living probably right now in the best field in the valley, don't you think? So uh, when I was growing up, we did raise some sheep, or my dad raised some sheep for a while. And so they, I have a few memories about that. I remember when the lambs would come in the springtime and he would, I had to look up exactly what it was called, uh, dock their tails. I always wondered how these little tiny green rubber bands could get on that sheep's tail, but it worked. I also remember when the shearer would come in the spring and I would stand out there watching them and I was always so amazed with how quickly my dad or the shearer would catch the sheep and even more amazed at how quickly he could shear. It always seemed like it was like zip, zip, zip and they were done and the sheep had lost all of its wool. And of course I also remember when the sheep would get out. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this wasn't the case, but in my memory, it was always my dad was gone when the sheep would get out. And so my mother had to get out there and do it. And I can remember her hollering, oh, sheep are the dumbest animals in the world. And she'd get out there. Uh, the Seuss family is laughing because they <laughs> raise sheep. So they understand this well, right? But you know, the bad news about sheep is when one gets out, like they all just follow. The good news is if you can get one back in, they tend to follow back in as well. Sheep, surprisingly enough, we call them not the smartest animals in the world, but they are more intelligent than we probably give them credit. They actually have some like recognition and memory skills, and they can make friendships within the flock. And uh, people, researchers even think that sheep actually have feel some emotion, especially including some anxiety if a member of their flock disappears. And so they do have this flock kind of mentality or understanding, I guess, of community. But we do know that sheep need a shepherd, right? They need somebody who is going to protect them from the predators, 
uh, somebody who can tend to their injury or their illness, give them a haircut periodically. And of course they need a shepherd who's going to lead them from one valley into the next so that they don't get lost or so that they don't wander into dangerous territory. And it's that getting lost part that I want to spend just a couple of minutes on today. This is a Good Shepherd Sunday and we have this metaphor in, in uh, both our, our psalm as well as in our gospel reading about we, the people of God, being sheep and that we are cared for and tended to by our great shepherd. As I think about that, I think about all the ways that we, just like sheep, can get lost. Right? We can get lost, it seems, so easily. Our directions for abiding in God, staying close to God, not getting lost, are really simple. We heard them again in our reading from 1 John this morning. All we need to do is believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. That's how we stay with God. But time and time again, it seems like we keep messing it up. Why is that? Why is it that we can't seem to trust God to provide just like God has promised? Why can't we follow in the footsteps that have already been laid out before us? Why can't we just love one another? Why do we always, just like the sheep in that story, why do we always think that there must be a better way or a better path to follow, something other than what we've got in the moment? And why is it we have to be so self-centered, so willing to trample on other people for the sake of chasing our own desires or even believing our own falsehoods? Why do we keep getting lost? I wonder if sheep know how lucky they are to have somebody who will make sure they're healthy and trimmed up I wonder if they know how lucky they are to have someone who is going to keep them from danger, is willing to rescue them whenever they go astray. And I wonder if we know how lucky we are to have someone who keeps forgiving us and loving us even when we get lost again and again. To have someone who will show us the green pastures and lead us to the still waters and all we have to do is follow. To have someone who keeps us on the right pathway and who will offer us spirit and light. Someone who will protect us even in the darkest valleys and give us life even in the midst of death. Do we know how lucky we are to have someone who has laid down his life for us so that we might have life. Sheep have been known to follow the voice of their shepherd. They recognize that voice, the one who cares for them, and they'll respond to the voice or the whistle or whatever it is that that person gives them. They trust their shepherd. How about us? Do we trust the voice of our shepherd? To recognize that voice, of course, takes time. We have to learn what that voice is and how to respond to it over time. We have to keep listening until it becomes familiar. And sometimes the best way to learn that voice or to hear that voice and learn to trust in the shepherd is to follow the lead of someone else who already knows that voice really, really well. That's probably one more lesson that we can learn from the sheep. And that is to trust your buddy. One of the reasons that sheep are fairly easy to herd, like I said before, is that they're comfortable flocking together. They like to stay close together, and in doing so, they give each other added protection as well. Sometimes I think if there's one area where we have definitely lost our way this past year, it's in our ability to flock together. So maybe it's time for us to practice that skill once again. Maybe once more we can realize that we really do need each other and that it really is so much better if we just keep trying to love each other instead of succumbing to the hate. Maybe it's time once again to remember how lucky we are that we really are just one tribe, one family, one flock, and that our Good Shepherd is always there to bless us and keep us. 
I want to close this morning with a prayer that I think says it much better than me. This prayer is called a prayer, or a poem actually, but it's called A Prayer for When We've Lost Our Way Again. It's written by Inuma Okoro, who is a Nigerian-American writer and speaker, and I invite you to pray with me. Merciful Lord, sometimes it seems like we can't help but lose our way again and again. Our hearts long to follow you, but you know the way of the human heart. You know how in our misguided longings we veer off our journeying to you and we begin to chart our own ways by false stars and distorted visions. Forgive us. Forgive us for all the times we are tempted by the hints of light instead of remaining steered by the assurance of your light. Forgive us when we forget that we are already claimed by you, loved by you, and purposed for you. Forgive us when we allow ourselves to shape and be shaped by voices and words that do not bring life, create life, nurture life, sustain life, or resurrect life. Merciful God, help us find our way again. Turn us back toward the road spotted with your other pilgrims, wayfarers, and repentant servants. Remind us that your way is the way of returning. Guide us by your spirit and by your light. Make us remember the power of the spirit within us. Make us remember the gifts of our minds, our hearts, and our bodies that you have bestowed on us that we would use them to honor the directives and the invitations you lay upon us. We know that our ways are not your ways, and we thank you for this. Help us trust your way over our way. Remind us of your faithfulness as you forgive our short memory. In your immeasurable love, grace, mercy, and wisdom, do not abandon us regardless of how often we lose our way. Place your wounded hands upon our broken hearts and turn us toward you, Lord of light, Lord of the life, Lord of resurrection. Amen. Amen. response to our prayers today is your mercy is great let us pray alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love 
loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns Countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Hope giving shepherd, the nations of this earth are yours. Place the passion to serve into the hearts of all leaders and rulers. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Abiding Shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need, especially Ben, Craig, Dave, Earl, Judy, Rosie, Ray, Diane, Margie, Tom, Jim, Helen, Dave, Lori, Pat, Cheryl, Norma, Jim, Cheech, and those we name out loud or in our hearts. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm going to use hand motions to share God's peace with you. So the peace of Christ be with you all. And I invite you to share peace with one another, God's peace with one another. There's a lot of peace throwing going on way across the lawn here. <laughs> All right. We say a prayer for offering each week because we are grateful that God has first given us everything that we have. And we also appreciate that as followers of Jesus, we share what we have with the rest of the world. So let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I invite you to uh, respond during the preparation of the table. People of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people, outcasts, betrayers, the power hungry, and fragile, lonely, lost. The first time this meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today, we remember the story. As it's been told a thousand times over, we eat the bread and we drink the wine, and we affirm that we all belong at his table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to the table broken, let, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table betrayed, let, Let this bread and wine be our wholeness. And if we come to the table in despair, 
Let this, Let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill a hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We're going to sing through the two choruses of You Are Holy, and then you can follow Mom, uh, Joanna, or me. <laughs> friends, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup poured out for you is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share one cup. Thanks be to God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to peel back that top layer of your uh, communion elements and remember that the body of Christ is given for you. Amen. And as you peel back the second layer for the juice, remember that the blood of Christ is shed for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. And receive this blessing. May our God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. And we end with song.
share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.